Hello, welcome to this video. This video will be covering the genome, the predicted traits, uh, appearance, and of course illnesses and GED match of an Eastern hunter-gatherer woman. Uh, what you see on the screen right now is another Eastern hunter-gatherer, although it's a different Eastern hunter-gatherer from the one that this video is about. Eastern hunter-gatherers were a Mesolithic population that lived in Northeast Europe and contributed greatly to the genetics of modern Europeans and even groups outside of Europe. In Europe, people with the highest amount of Eastern hunter-gatherer, and particularly Sidelkino, which is the sample that this video is about, um, admixture are the Finnish from the east of Finland, and outside of Europe it's Tajiks. Many people ignorant, ignorantly don't know this and just assume that every ancient sample is male and has a Y DNA, but um, I'm going to surprise you, this sample is a female, does not have a Y DNA, however her mitochondrial DNA was U5. This is her predicted phenotype with my Nashakot tool. My Nashakot tool is predicting her to have uh, hazel eyes, a snub-shaped nose, which is like an upturned uh, kind of a Finnish nose, uh, and brown hair, brown hair at 94.5%. Uh, what's interesting is she had two derived alleles in all SLC45A2 variants, which are implicated in light skin and eyes. Um, Western hunter-gatherers did not have these uh, derived alleles. She also have had two derived alleles in all TIRP1 variants, which are most common. Derived alleles in these variants are most common in Northeast Europe today. And she had two derived alleles in the Keto-G blonde hair variant, which is uh, super interesting and very, very rare in modern Europeans. However, the that just because it says it's a blonde variant uh, doesn't mean it's particularly important. Yes, it contributes to blonde hair, but it's not particularly important. As you can see, her prediction is still uh, that she had brown hair. Moving on, she had one derived allele in MC1R, which you can check because the file is going to be in the description. You can just download the file and check all that for yourself. Uh, but this derived allele in MC1R is implicated in red hair and also is super rare in modern Europeans. Uh, it's non-existent outside of Europe and super rare in Europeans is what I should specify. Uh, same applies to Keto-G. Just because it's super rare in Europeans, you might be thinking, I'm saying that, oh, that means it's a non-European allele. No, it's a very European allele. It's only present in Europe, but it's super rare in Europe. And she also had BH1, she did not have BH2, and somehow without having BH2, she had one derived allele in BH3, which I don't understand how that happened. Maybe it's a dislinkage event. I don't know how this uh, how this transpired, but uh, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, you should watch my video about the phylogenetic tree of blue eyes to understand. Her genotype in DRD2 is like basically very stereotypically European. Once again, it's typical for Europeans, and it's. Uh, impossible to find outside of Europe. So she was a no-go learner with a lower amount of D2 dopamine receptor uh, sites in the brain. She had a lower risk of schizophrenia as well. She did not have the sociopath gene. She did not have the European allele for lactose persistence and was likely lactose intolerant. She also did not have the European allele that protects against myopia. Moving on to polygenic traits and diseases, she had a super high score for coronary heart disease. She had a pretty high score, above average score for schizophrenia. Uh, she had a below average score for Crohn's disease, probably did not have that. Uh, she had an average score for type 1 diabetes and she had a very high score for bipolar disorder. This is what she scores with the Eurogenes K13 calculator. One thing you can notice is that she's scoring a little bit of South Asian, uh, a little bit of Siberian, Amerindian ancestry which, in my guess, it is due to the ancient North Eurasian affinities towards these groups. And her closest population, according to the Oracle, are Lithuanians, Russians, Estonians, but uh, come on, with this kind of a distance, this doesn't really mean anything. And these are her results with Eurogenes K36. The biggest categories are Eastern European and Fennoscandian. And by the way, guys, uh, if you are unsatisfied with this image that I'm uh, putting up on the screen, you can download, you can literally download the file and just upload it on G GZmatch by yourself and run it for whatever calculator you want. So don't complain to me about uh, me giving you bad images. This is what she scores with Pun DNA LK12. Now, uh, I'm noticing here that she's scoring a lot of like Amerindian, South Asian, and Beringian, which is probably the excess ancient North Eurasian component and she's also scoring a little bit of Caucasus which is interesting and we'll get back to it later. According to the Oracle she's closest to Samara hunter-gatherers but you have to understand that this result is only such because this calculator lacks a reference sample for Sidielkino. This is what she scores with Pun DNA LK10 and by the way notice how she's scoring once again 17% CHG and this is what I've been saying 
like a year ago. I've made a video a year ago, literally, about CHG ancestry in East Eurasians, I mean, in Eastern hunter-gatherers. And what I'm thinking is that these ancient North Eurasians had some CHG or Caucasus affinities that Western hunter-gatherers did not have, because if they didn't, wouldn't this calculator just model it as a mixture of WHG and Amerindian? Why add the Caucasus in there? Clearly, this person and uh, ancient North Eurasians as well had some Caucasus affinities. Uh, this is what she scores with the Gedrosia K3 calculator. As you can see, she's scoring 80% West Eurasian and about uh, one-sixth East Eurasian. And this is what she scores with the MDLP K23B calculator. Now, in this calculator, I think the European hunter-gatherer category is based on like Scandinavian hunter-gatherers. And relative to the Scandinavian hunter-gatherers, she's more Amerindian, Altaic, South Central Asian, that type of stuff. By the way, South Central Asian is showing up here. This is like basically an Eastern version of Caucasus. There is a little bit of this Southern or like pseudo-Mediterranean ancestry uh, that this person had. Uh, the oracle for this calculator is just being really stupid. It's modeling her as a mixture of like Sami with Navajo or like Amerindian, but look at the distance. It's not a very good fit. Uh, finally, thank you guys for having watched until the end. You can download this sample in 23andMe format. I'm also gonna leave uh, I'm gonna leave links in the description to download it in 23andMe format, like a combined kit which basically combines all of the genotype, basically all of the all of the SNPs that she was genotyped for, and also my heritage format, so you can just download it in whatever format you want. And leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.